let's see today first we'll study about preparation of alkenes from aldehydes and ketones so this is known as the wittig reaction wittig reaction what exactly happens in this if you take r c double bond o any aldehyde r ketone and react that with triphenyl phosphine which is connected with ch minus and r this way that would give us r r dash c double bond c h and r plus ph3 p double bond o so what it has become is triphenyl triphenyl phosphooxide this is the overall reaction so anywhere if you see this reactant here the triphenyl phosphine this has resonance stabilization of ph3 p double bond ch and r okay so this is how it exists so we can either write it this way or we can show it with plus and minus sign the formation of this molecule or rather this molecule is called as lide y l i d e lide okay so wherever you find lights the easier way first understand how to work out on the reactions you break this bond and connect it to c double bond okay so wherever you have like c double bond o and you see that ph3 p double bond ch and r what we'll do we'll break the bond here we'll break the bond here we connect this part with this and oxygen with the phen uh, phosphorus group that's so we will get c double bond ch and r plus ph thrice p double bond o this is an easier way to remember okay now let's see how we can prepare the light here preparation of pph3 pH three triphenyl phosphine. It has one lone pair with CH three. If it treats with CH three Cl, the lone pair will attack it, remove out Cl minus by SN two mechanism. So here, this is acting like a nucleophile and attacking on the substrate, removing out Cl minus. So we will get P pH three. I'll write the pH three on the other side. pH three P because it has giving the lone pair it will connect with CH three here. This is how it is. <clears throat> Now we will use some strong base like BuLi, BuLi as in Bu minus and lithium plus. So if you take a strong base because it is a strong withdrawing group. See P pH three is a strong withdrawing group. it will increase the acidic strength of this proton so hence this b minus will extract the proton from here and creates ph thrice p plus and ch2 minus ch2 minus and this exists in a lide form so ph3 p double bond ch2 so that's how the lide is been prepared So the first step is to make sure we prepare the lide. The second step is to make sure the lide attacks on carbonyl group. Suppose if you take a carbonyl group like C, R, and R dash, which has double bond O, there is always delta negative, a delta positive, and delta negative present with respect to C double bond O. so this carbon is ready for always a nucleophilic addition so what we will do we'll take this opportunity and react with this ch minus p ph3 plus cis minus so this will attack on carbon here so pi bond will shift so we will get this as r dash c r o minus <coughs> ch And R, okay. Now observe it. We have P P H three P 
pH 3 plus charge here. So this plus and minus will attack on it correct, to form R dash C R O and C H R dash and P P H 3 with a bond here. Right. So the formation of this compound, so it is, you can see it is a cyclic, uh, you know, four member ring. This is called oxaphosphatine. Oxaphosphatine. So once we get oxaphosphatine from here, because you know that four member ring can't be stable. So this bond here, C double bond O bond will break here and this bond will break towards this side. And what we will get eventually is R dash C R double bond C H R dash plus P P H three double bond O. Clear everyone? So that's how the alkene is going to be formed. And this reaction is called Wittig reaction. The slow step is always the addition of the nucleophile. CH bond with phosphorus is breaking to make is breaking to make more stable bond C double bond C, which has more bond strength. Same way, C single bond O is breaking to make a more stable bond which has more bond strength, which is P double bond O. So the motivation for breaking the bond is bond strength of C double bond C and P double bond O. See the question now. Suppose if you have an epoxide group that you are treating with PH3P triphenyl phosphine, then the product we will get is an alkene CH, CH2. See exceptionally P double bond O has a very high bond energy. So wherever there is an opportunity, phosphorus gets to bond with uh, oxygen, it would always try to make a double bond. Let us see how this mechanism proceeds. So if in case if we have this epoxide, PH3P as a nucleophile will attack at this carbon and break this bond. This also drives through SN2 mechanism. And what we get here is O minus. And from there, once we get that. <clears throat> now, when it comes to this molecule here, O minus is here, pH P plus is here. And this single bond can easily rotate. It will rotate such a way that this P, pH 3, I mean, or O minus is always more directed towards phosphorus because it can attack to form P double bond O. Again, a four membered ring is formed here. You can see like this with P. And this has three phenyl groups. And from there, bond breaking will take place. But this bond will break here. And P double bond O bond will form. So pH thrice P double bond O plus CH2 double bond CH2. So that's how we will get an alkene. Next, you can see pH 3 P. If you react with PH3P here, the same case here also. Imagine attack will happen and happen from any of the direction here. Got it? So even if uh, the reaction will happen, let's say on this direction, what happens? What uh, what will happen here? This is a straight bond. Hydrogen was going in. Methyl is coming out, and pH got attacked here. So we'll have P, pH 3 plus oxygen will be on this side O minus. And here we had methyl coming out and hydrogen going in. This is how the situation was. All right. Now this will rotate so that oxygen can come up. So as it rotates here, you will have O minus P, pH 3 plus this side 
we have hydrogen connected to methyl okay and the hydrogen which was going inside now when you rotate it it will come outside so this would be hydrogen and this will be methyl now further o minus will attack here four membered ring is formed so p ph thrice o connected with this carbon and this carbon this way and methyl is going in and methyl is coming out here after the bond breaking <clears throat> got it you can see what uh, what will happen after bond breaking here so this bond will break to make a double bond p and here double bond c is formed okay students so you can see c double bond c which is forming both methyl now this side the methyl will come the, the other methyl will be on the other side so we can see methyl here and methyl here will settle down on the plane and that's on alkene trans alkene will come as a major product basically here what we are doing we'll take esters and just heat it o and ch2 ch2 ch3 and this ester on heating will change to ch3 c double bond o oh acid and forms an alkene this way right this type of mechanism mechanism is called ei mechanism see whenever the mechanism uh, i mean when the elimination is happening on the alpha carbon alpha position only then we usually call it as ei or it is no i represents internal so which is intramolecular or internal internal or intra molecular mechanism which means suppose if i write the uh sohors projection here we write the sohors projection and there is a hydrogen here and let's say there is hydrogen here ch3 here and the second carbon here is connected to oxygen which is connected to c double bond o and which is connected to ch3 this is the way we have so if you see which ester this is this is ch3 c double bond o o and let me put this as h and h here so what do we have here is ch2 then ch2 and ch3 so i guess you should be able to figure out this is the same molecule which i have written but i just made sure that this hydrogen on the beta position with respect to this oxygen both of them will be at the eclipsed form doing so <clears throat> got it so when you have that not that sorry one minute here right it will be good better we have this way c double bond o this way got it so this o minus which has come this can actually make a bond here basically it's the attack of lone pair only but i'm just showing the bond breaking when the lone pair from c double bond o attacks here this bond will break to make the double bond and carbon hydrogen bond will break to make a double bond here so what we would get is a cyclic transition state where this molecule i mean c and c bond is there c and oxygen bond is there c and carbon bond is there here another oxygen bond is there here this is written as o oxygen bond is here like this and now here the bond breaking has started with hydrogen 
and hydrogen bond making has started with oxygen rest of them were transition state this way bond breaking is done and this pi is moving here to make a double bond and here the bond is also breaking so when i write that now what do we have here we have h and h here also we have h and methyl so this is the transition state which is happening here ch3 so as it breaks completely we will have the molecule this way ch3 h c double bond c h and h plus the other molecule which is forming is ch3 coh so this is the pyrolysis of esters <clears throat> and given an opportunity suppose if there are uh, two types of you know alpha carbons here suppose here instead of this hydrogen got it in case if there is some ch3 group got it and here also instead of this h there is some ch3 group then how do you make the preference that is whether this reaction is regioselective or not let us for example if i take ch3 c double bond o o ch ch3 ch2 ch3 this if we heat it we will get two molecules plus ch3 cooh i meant i get two alkyl molecules in fact this would also have cis and trans now here if you observe the major product is hoffman this is the major product and these are minor products so hoffman is coming as a major product any particular reason if you see this this oxygen is the one which is combining with either this carbon observe it carefully while the mechanism is happening when the mechanism happens here so this oxygen is the one which can either combine i mean either extract the proton from this or it can extract the proton from this right so that's how the reaction is going to happen for example if you take ch3 ch3 c and we have o here and ch2 ch ch2 ch3 here and then we have ch3 here and we have double bond o okay this is one way i can orient <coughs> right students so we can have oxygen then we can see there is ch okay and we have ch3 group here like this okay or i can make this orientation as this ch3 on this side okay here hydrogen this hydrogen here this is one orientation so this lone pair can attack here and further you know how the transition state happens or the other way to look at it is if i take ch3 c o and i put this as ch ch2 ch3 here and put ch2 and h with double bond o and this lone pair is attacking here got it so which means when you take this attack in the first case there is a methyl group which is coming clear so due to steric reasons okay the formation of cyclic st uh, structure would be little difficult but here you can see this carbon is very very less hindered so it is very easy to orient hydrogens so where is the better elimination happening in this case as compared to this one so therefore hoffman product hoffman product is favored 
of mint fever uh, product is fever due to steric hindrance due to steric hindrance i cannot everyone we show you with an example in fisher projection suppose if we have ph h methyl here h here o c o c h 3 and ph and i'm heating that right and the product which you'll get is c double bond c ph ph and ph h and h this you'll get it as major product okay why you can check it out o c h 3 here okay so you have to make a syn elimination right so if it has to be syn elimination this hydrogen this hydrogen and this group both should be on the same side okay so i can show you through newman projection suppose we have ph h and methyl here then we have o c h 3 here got it and <clears throat> ph here and methyl here so these two will go together they need to be syn to each other for elimination to happen and on heating what are we getting here now so we can see ph and ph on the back side with methyl and hydrogen on the back side so one of them is methyl here right Done, students. So you can see this is nothing but cis product. On a similar terms. Sir, that is OCOCH three, sir. OCOCH three. On a similar terms, we can also make pyrolysis of xanthates. We can make pyrolysis of xanthates. Let me show you what are xanthates here. We have CH three. CH two O C double bond O and S and M E. The group is this way, and you are heating it. You also will get CH two double bond CH two plus C O S plus M E S H. Now let's see what exactly happens in xanthates. You can see the same way. These are called xanthates. Here also a Hoffman product will be formed. Now you can imagine same thing this way with oxygen, right, and carbon connected with double bond S and S M E, S M E, and here there is a hydrogen which will which it will extract. This bond will make as a double bond, and this bond will move. Got it. This bond gets replaced on sulfur. So what we will get is this alkene plus uh, SH C double bond O S M E plus uh, which is unstable form to form C O S plus M E S H. <coughs> Vishik, okay. first, uh, there is a lot of disturbance coming first. Now, now on mute and talk. Yeah. Sir, yeah, there are two samples or one sample. Here, beta. This is also sulfur. This is S beta S. This is as anthed as well. See here, carbon oxygen bond is breaking to make this C double bond O. C double bond S is breaking to get this lone pair back to sulfur. The lone pair which was already present on sulfur is being shared with hydrogen to make the bond. So that's how we will get S H bond here and C S bond, C double bond O and S M is present already. Right, beta. Yes, sir. 
See, usually how xanthids are prepared. When we take alcohol, we know that if it react with sodium, it will give alkoxid, RO, Na plus. H2 gas is released. This, when you treat with, <clears throat> this when we treat with CS2, C double bond S, double bond S, okay. So then RO minus will attack on carbon. This bond will be formed here to get R, O, C, double bond, S and S minus. S minus Na plus basically. And once you get this form, if you react it with any alkyl halide by SN mechanism, you get R, C, double bond, O, S and CH3 formation. So that's how the xanthids are formed. Let me give you as an example. Suppose in case if at all I have CD3, then I have CH2, O, C double bond S and S, CH2, CH3. Okay. Please understand that it is not the sulfur side which is the bond breaking happens. It is on the oxygen side. So double bond will be formed on this side. Got it. So on heating, you will get CD2 double bond CH2 okay, plus COS plus CH3 CH2 SD. Now let's see next term which is cope elimination. Huh? Sir, please remove the recording symbols. Where is it? Oh, it's, this one is coming. Last two products. Check here. Yeah. Okay. So this double bond is closing up here. This bond is breaking. And S minus which is coming, it will extract this proton. Okay. Carb one carbon cannot hold multiple lone pair carrying group. Okay. They will always be unstable. So that's why this double bond will, I mean this lone pair will try to close us this. So what do we get here? H, S, double bond, C. And this is becoming, at the same time, it will become double bond O. And S, M, E minus has broke with this plus sign. So this minus will take here and pipe uh, that will become lone pair. Sigma bond will become lone pair. Okay. See everyone, what is cope elimination? Cope elimination is when you have 3 degree amine oxide, 3 degree amine oxide, which is undergoing an elimination. For instance, CH3, CH2, N, R, R dash, and O minus. Like this, we have 3 degree amine oxide. That on heating will give you CH2 double bond, CH2 plus R, R dash, N, and OH. If you see here, it is making a cyclic structure also, CH, and let's say we have H here, CH2, right, with nitrogen, there is an oxygen here, which will extract this proton, okay, and this nitrogen has R, or oh, here plus charge is there. So R and R dash, this plus charge, okay. So this bond will break here, for it, and this will make a double bond formation. <clears throat> I think all of you understood how the transition state looks like. This is called cope elimination. And if you exactly write the transition state, it is CH, CH2, okay, with uh, dotted lines with N here, with oxygen, dotted lines with hydrogen, dotted lines with carbon here, with a double bond formation and here we have R and R okay so this has delta positive charge N and O is oh. it is already there now between C and N the bond is breaking now beta so that's why it is dotted okay and it is taking electrons on nitrogen 
so that's why it is becoming neutral usually how do we prepare sometimes question will be given from here only beta but sometimes question will be given from the start so you need to know how exactly the oxide was prepared see most of the time if you have any tertiary uh, amine on heating with h2o2 on heating with h2o2 h2o2 <coughs> will get added up here as ch3 ch2 twice and ch2 ch3 plus okay and o minus this o minus will get stuck here think as if this h2o has left and o got stuck here with nitrogen and that's how we will have this oxide mechanism will happen this way beta o h o h right so this lone pair is going to attack here because this bond will break onto this oxygen so o minus will take away this proton right and creates this n and o minus bond so that is how the oxide is being made and this on heating will finally give you ch2 double bond ch2 plus ch3 ch2 n times 2 n times and oh got it so sometimes it is given from the starting of the reaction so still you should be able to figure out. Now, just like uh, uh, xanthid pyrolysis or for that matter, esters, here also the Hoffman products are more favored. Let me show you how. Suppose in case if we have N this way, okay, and one more N this way, and here it is connected with O minus, this on heating. On heating here, check out with respect to this nitrogen, it is alpha and beta, alpha and beta, alpha and beta. So which is the least crowded beta? Because elimination would happen on that position only. So the least crowded beta is this one. These two are still crowded, which means which have methyl group. So they don't get oriented that easily. The easy way of orientation is this beta hydrogen. So on heating, we will see that bond breaking will happen here. So when the bond breaking takes place, what is the product here now? So we would get this as N with OH plus CH2 double bond CH2. This side beta, this side beta elimination will happen. So CH3, CH double bond CH. Now, what we are learning currently, this is very important, students. So try to understand it carefully. This is called Hoffman, Hoffman exhaustive, exhaustive elimination. Hoffman exhaustive elimination, or also known as methylation. Different books, different terminology. It is given as HEE -E or HEM. Both meant this Hoffman exhaustive methylation. See the uh, see the reaction first. So if you take CH3, CH2, NH2, okay. Now see this when you react with alkyl halide, in fact, methyl halide by means of an SN2 mechanism. CH3, CH2, NH and CH3 is formed. Okay, so you can guess that lone pair is attacking here, Cl is leaving, the Cl minus which has lost extracted the proton come out as HCl and this is the product that has formed. You do it one more time here, so CH3, Cl. So again there is a lone pair, so we will get CH3, CH2, N, CH3 and CH3 with the lone pair and minus HCl. So what you'll get? Lone pair is still present on nitrogen. So this reaction keeps happening till the lone pair uh, is not available on nitrogen. So we'll get CH3, CH2, and CH3, CH3, and CH3. Which means as long as alkyl halide is available, it would form a salt. Ammonium will become salt that is the last product which you can expect okay so this is called exhaustive methylation which means 
excess amount of methylation is been done on you know amine here got it so once you get this ammonium salt from here the actual reaction would start so that is ch3 ch2 and i have n ch3 ch3 and ch3 plus charge here and if at all i treat this with agoh agoh usually silver salts are taken just to make sure the halide does not reattack so whatever ag will be there it will precipitate as agcl got it so this oh minus okay so you can see that this oh minus as a base will try to extract the proton from this beta position hydrogen and this bond will break onto nitrogen that's how you would get ch2 ch2 plus n methyl methyl and methyl plus h2 got it now you can imagine these type of reactions are favored in which cases see if you have positive charged leaving group if you have highly positive charged leaving group like in case of n r3 plus or p r3 plus or s r2 plus so in this type of cases we will see you know specifically this type of elimination here what is happening these groups are strongly withdrawing groups right so they'll try to leave and e2 mechanism is favored with hoffman with hoffman as major product as well as major product okay why does hoffman comes as a major product because it will show okay carbo carb anionic character anionic character decides the major product carb anionic character decides the major product so basically here when nitrogen is supposed to leave the hydrogen leaves at a faster rate so there is a slight carb anion character which is developed it is similar it is in between e1 and e1 cb it is not completely e1 cb it is not completely e2 okay students so let me mention that mechanism is between e2 and e1 cb so it is not completely forming e1 cb neither it is completely e2 that is not completely simultaneously reaction is happening so we can learn this through an example suppose if we have n group this way and h and i am doing an exas2 methylation an exas2 methylation so already two n groups are there so one ch3 will form first removing out h minus and again we react with ch3 i so the reaction will happen one more time so we will get two methyl groups here with plus sign now here when you treat with oh minus oh minus first we have to decide which are the alpha positions and beta positions this is alpha this is beta this is alpha this is beta right and these are alpha they said there is no beta got it so elimination would happen such a way that oh minus will try to extract proton from the beta position so it is it can extract from here it can extract from here while it is extracting either this bond will break or this bond will break okay now imagine we are more concerned about this product this side of the reaction so bond breaking will happen towards this nitrogen and alpha carbon here when the bond breaking happens see how the transition state is what is happening here we have 
nitrogen these two methyl with delta negative and this bond is breaking with carbon and this bond is already existing here and the hydrogen which is present here is breaking off with OH minus which is delta negative. Okay. What you need to notice is that there is a delta negative character which is developed during the bond breaking because this bond breaking and this bond breaking are not exactly happening simultaneously. The reason being is nitrogen has very strong positive charge which also makes a very strong bond between carbon and nitrogen. So bond breaking, although it is a good living group because NME is a good living group, it is not able to do because of its strong bonding between carbon. So by the time OH minus extract the proton, already there is some delta negative charge formed on it. Then the breaking will take place. All right. So once you get that, now the double bond is formed here. So this is the transition state through which it goes. So once you get that, what is the final product? You see that here we have N, right? This bond has already broken. So double bond will be here. So we have two methyl groups and this one. So this one will be the major product. And the other side attack will be the minor product. So here also half men are, is going to be the major product. NME after it comes out, it is neutral, no beta. This is neutral molecule, right? Initially it was charged, it is neutral. So any charged species will always try to come back to the neutral part. For example, if you are OH2 plus, why would this OH2 is leaving? Yesterday we have seen a carbocation formation. Because it can become neutral. Suppose if you have N here and group is this way. I treated with CH3I. So what do we get? N with one CH3 with plus. And on treating with AGOH, AGOH can also be referred as moist AG2O. Okay. Moist AG2O is going to produce AGOH only. N, we will get this. Okay, we have CH3 here, correct. On reaction with this, what would happen? You can see bond breaking can take place here, correct. So because these are beta positions, this is beta position, this is beta position, and this is beta position. Okay, students. So let's say the bond which is internally aligned that broke so this is what happens and double bond will form here again if i do exhaustive methylation i continue to do exhaustive methylation here so h e e m writing so that you can understand i've added one more methyl group there so we have one more methyl group here plus charge and this double bond and on breaking it with AgOH and heat. So let's say this bond has broken here. So one more double bond will come on this side. So I'll start giving the numbering. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So it's a 9 carbon chain. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Now the ninth, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And on the ninth carbon, I have two methyl groups on it. And between one and two, there is a double bond. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. And between four and five, there is a double bond. Got it. And suppose if at all I do again exhaustive methylation and AGOH heat, what should happen, beta? which means this side also it should leave and between 8 and 9 also we should get a double bond. So the final product would be double bond, double bond and finally double bond here. So this is the final product. 
So in case if we do exhaustive methylation this way, we can remove all the nitrogens possible. Here again exhaustive methylation happened beta. Exhaustive methylation as in I'm treating that with CH3I. So the lone pair on nitrogen attack here, I minus is left, comes out as HI. So we'll get two methyl groups connected. Got that beta? And again with AGOH, beta position at alpha beta, you should get a double bond and this should break. So here bond breaking is taking place. At alpha beta position, you are getting a double bond. So this is that double bond. We have R, C, imagine this, R, N, methyl, H, okay. And I treat that with CH3I. The lone pair first attacks here. Get R, N, methyl, methyl, H with positive charge and I minus. I minus will extract the proton and mix it R, N, M, E, M, E plus H, I. Understood that? That's how it will keep removing. Hmm? For that formation, there is a hydrogen here, no beta? OH minus has extracted the proton from here. Got it? This is that reaction. AG, OH, when you're reacting this, this OH minus is the one which is extracting the proton from the beta position. So alpha position bond will break. So we'll get a double bond here. Right students, check this out. Uh, when we discussed about E2, uh, E1CB mechanism, okay. E1CB mechanism, one thing you must be, you know, aware of is there is an carb anion formation and then there is an elimination, got it? Now the similar kind of thing will be observed when you have base induced, base induced elimination. Base induced elimination, which means suppose if you have R, C, O, H and X and R is there. Let's say this is halide. And I'm treating with strong base like NH2 minus. First, strong base will strong base will extract proton and comes out as NH3. This will come RC O minus is form. X is there here and R. Now, when you have O minus and some leaving group, right? Always O minus will become a double bond here and X minus will leave. So you can see it is an elimination that is happening here. So we'll get it as R, C, double bond O, R. In a way, it is like a elimination <coughs> on which hydrogen is also present. Hydrogen is present here. X is present here, right? So this is also like alpha beta elimination, except that first base initiated here made a carb anion, can you see it is similar to that of E1CB and then that carb anion used to close it as a double bond and leaving group used to go. Okay. So therefore, you will get this as a double bond form here. Yeah? Okay. Let me give you one more example. Suppose if you have CH3, COH, CN and C2H5. This is called cyanohydrin. Cyanohydrin. If I treat this with RO minus, RO minus will extract H. So we'll get this as CH3, C, O minus, CN, C2H5. Same thing. This will close as double bond. Cyanide will be. So we will get this as CH3, C double bond O, and C2H5. These are all the base induced elimination reactions. Clear everyone? You, as you go ahead in the chapters, you will see this uh, base 
catalyzed in these elimination is used a lot of times to remove out the unwanted group. We have C2H5. See how many different uh, cases it can work. We have an ester here. We'll take a strong base, extract proton from here. We get CH3, C, O minus, C2H5, okay, O, C2H5. Again, this will close as double bond. And this group will leave, making it as CH3, C, double bond O, C2H5. So these are all the ways to, you know, do the base induced elimination. The best one which you will see is in the aldol condensation. In aldehydes and ketones, you will see this as the most used. CH3, CH, OH, CH, O, C double bond O, H. This is called aldol, an aldehyde with an all called as aldol. And aldol, the minute you use, you react that with any base like OH minus. So we'll extract the proton, forms a carb anion here. So CH3, CH, OH, CH minus charge and C double bond OH. This minus charge will be induced here to remove this OH minus. And that's how you will get CH3, CH double bond C, C double bond OH. What happened overall water has removed, right? So that's why it is called condensed form of aldol. So we are basically removing out water from it. Now, whatever the EI reactions we have learned, one thing you must understand that they are going to give you uh, Hoffman products as major products, all right? The first one being addition of HX, also known as hydro halogenation. So you're making a hydro halogenation. <clears throat> okay, let's see the reaction. Suppose there is an alkene and I treat it with HCl. It would form this Cl as the product. See the mechanism here. The double bond, as it reacts with H plus, please understand that the solution will have, this is an acidic solution, so there would be H plus available. And pi bond, pi is a nucleophilic character because it is an electron rich cloud. So this pi will attack on H plus, all right? And it can go through an electromeric effect. That is what we call it as zeroth step. I usually do not, in mechanism, they do not write it. Remember zeroth step as in first you can get minus and plus here. This is called electromeric effect. And then this H plus being attacked. So in most of the mechanism, you directly the arrow is being shown without the zeroth step. But you get understand that there is an electromeric effect happening. And as it reacts with H plus, now see it is HCl present. So I'll just want to show that when H plus is attacking, Cl minus is also leaving. This would always be a slow reaction. And you will get this as the carbocation formation here. Okay. So plus Cl minus is there. Got it. Now what could happen? This Cl minus can again re-attack here. All right. So this is a very fast reaction, and we can get a Cl here. Or this Cl can undergo <coughs> right. So this Cl can uh, undergo carbocation rearrangement here, and then Cl then Cl minus can attack. Which means there are two ways on which this double bond can be distributed. One, we can get, if you react with this H+, plus, we can get two types of carbocations. I can get this carbocation as well as I can get this carbocation. And from here, if Cl- reacts, which is a fast step, 
here also if cl minus reacts which is a fast step i can get this secondary substituted product or i can get primary substituted product now if you see how the you know reaction progress is graphically check out this is the energy profile so we started off somewhere here then we increase we went higher towards the transition state to get a carbocation so from carbocation slightly a fast reaction from here has made so that final reaction final product can come here and at the same time we also found there is one more path where you are getting a more stable carbocation slightly it is going this way and it is coming here so what are these products beta this is secondary carbocation this is primary carbocation okay this is cl and this is cl here got it what all things you must learn see we are in uh, the pi bond is breaking into making of two new sigma bonds which means this is this reaction is going to be you know uh, endothermic sorry exothermic because you are making two sigma bonds here okay so that's why you can see the products are always lesser energy i mean lesser energy as compared to that of reactant got that guys and if you were asked like which is the major product major product will always be on the basis of where the stable carbocation is formed so let me write down that more stable carbocation more stable the carbocation because that is a slow step more stable the carbocation more is the product form more is the product form okay which means it is being a regio selective isn't or not there are two products that could have form one is almost forming around 80 90% the other one is forming hardly 5 10% which means it is definitely regio selective in nature okay so this regio selectivity is called as markovnikov's orientation or markovnikov's rule so let me write down that markovni markovnikov's rule or orientation basically it says that the negative part the negative part of the reagent the negative part of the reagent added to the carbon having less number of carbon having less number of hydrogens correct which means whatever the halide that we are adding to the double bond it will add add it to the carbon having less number of hydrogens which is same as saying as more stable carbocation more product that is formed okay for example if you take okay now here if you check out in case if at all i treat that with hbr right. so what do we get here now so we'll get this as br plus another br product which one will be major beta first one will be major second one will be minor same way you got double bond and adding with hbr we can get this is one product okay and we can get this as the other product got it when see when you have the primary position right this quantity is almost in traces this is almost in traces so this is not a double bond but this is almost in traces so we usually do not count it as a product itself this will be almost the highest amount of product content which you will get i hope you guys understood that now in case if there is any withdrawing group connected to it like we have o2n 
CH and double bond CH2. Then I'm adding by HCl. We have O2 N and CH2 and CH2 CL. And if you have CF3, CH double bond CH2, we treat that with HCl. I'm getting F3C CH2 CH2 CL. Now, when the addition is happening as the opposite thought of what Markovnikov's rule is, because here the negative adduct is being added to the carbon which has more number of hydrogens. Clear? My students, so that is what is happening here. This had less number of hydrogen, this has more number of hydrogens. So now chlorine is added to the more number of hydrogen carbon. This is called anti Markovnikov's addition. Anti Markovnikov's addition. Why this is happening? Check here. If you have O2N, CH double bond CH2, and when H plus gets added, so we would get this as O2N, CH plus, and CH3. This is what I can get. Or I can get another product as O2N, CH2, CH2 plus. So these two are the chances of carbocation. Which is more unstable or which is more stable carbocation here? One and two, if you check out, if you check out the stability of this carbocation, which is more stable beta, two is more stable than one. Is all of you understood that? So that's why the halide which is attacking is here more than the other one. On similar lines, if you see, there is a double bond here. And then HCl has been added to it. Again, you just put the carbocations and see what is the best possible product you can get. This is one carbocation, and this is one carbocation which can we can get. Which is more stable carbocation? The second one is more stable carbocation. So the chlorine will get added here, and this will be major product. We will get Br here. And you'll get Br here. All right. These two are the possibilities. Although one of them is slightly more stable carbocation than the other, the difference is quite less. So that's why if you see the percentage experimentally, almost this is 50% and this is 50% form. Here we can get Cl here plus pH. Seal here. Here, clearly, this could be major product because of resonance. So, wherever there is a major product coming, we call it as regio selective product because it is being select, it is being more selective over the other. So, if we check out the reactivity of these reactions, more the amount of reactivity depends upon how easily the double bond can be reacted. So if you see R CH double bond CH2 R2 C double bond CH2 R CH double bond CH R R2 C double bond CH R and R2 C double bond C R2. If you compare all of them just always check out the more stable carbocations and if you check out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 the reactivity order reactivity order will be on the most stable carbocation formation so that's why you'll see 1 being less reactive than 2 then 3 then 4 then 5 and then 6 Next. if you have CH2 double bond CH Cl. We have CH2 double bond CH2. Okay. And if you have CH2 double bond CH and CH3. Clear? Here if you check out what we have to do on addition carbocation can, can come here. 
carbocation can come here carbocation can come here so check out here ch3 ch plus cl ch2 ch3 ch2 plus and ch3 ch plus and ch3 between these three carbocations right although chlorine can give plus r effect overall it's it has more minus r effect i mean overall it's minus r effect is dominant over its my plus r effect clear so this is definitely going to be more withdrawing okay so if i take this as 1 2 and 3 what will be the reactivity the activity will be 3 greater than 2 greater than 1 even then it is even then it is withdrawing na no, beta because in that case we will have ch ch2 plus ch2 cl right this is withdrawing while methyl is donating so if you look at the zero chemistry what we have here is h h and let's say there is an ethyl group here and i'm adding it to dcl right so i'll get this as ch3 c h d c h c l c2 h5 i am let let me talk on only about the major product well we can get the minor product also where cl is here and d is here here everyone now check this out beta on this double bond because it is planar okay think this way this double bond is planar like this correct so d plus when it is attacking this can attack from here correct and after attacking of that then we have a carbocation formation here correct and this carbocation formation which has happened now this is an orbital for which cl minus can attack from the top it can attack from bottom both of them are open quite at the same amount here yeah. so the probability of attacking from the top of from the bottom is same which means while this attack happens here is there any specific way that d has to attack only this way or cl has to attack only this way no which means all possible things will come here which means now it has become a chiral center you can see that these two have become chiral centers so what are the possible products i can get here so the possible products would be if this is r configured this may also be r configured if this is r configured this may be s configured if this is s configured this may be r configured and if this this is s configured this may be s configured which means all of them are possible so which shows that addition reaction is highly non stereo specific so it is not stereo specific all the products can come here here so what are the possible number of products here total four products okay so there is no preference as such that one is dominant over the other or only one direction most amount of reaction is happening nothing like that because this, these are planar reactions yes you will get another four total eight products okay i am writing only major product if you write the minor product you will get total eight products so i hope all of you got an idea how to work out on the markovnikov's addition cases now let's see addition of hbr addition of hbr in presence of in presence of peroxide for instance if we take this double bond and treat with hbr but this in the presence of a peroxide peroxide as in any oo or any oxygen oxygen single bond present it could be r2o2 it could be h2o2 or it could be anything like benzoyl peroxide like this is called the benzoyl peroxide 
this one. So any of this peroxide will make a reaction here and the major product this time formed would be this, which means anti Markovnikov product is coming out to be the major product. Let's see the mechanism here. So if we take any peroxide and expose it to sunlight or heat, we will first initiate a radical. The radical initiated will be treated with HBr and it will form ROH plus Br dot. So that's how the Br dot or the Br radical is going to form. And when the Br radical comes in contact with the double bond, right, then it will undergo homolytic splitting. And you remember Br dot is very selective. So it will always try to form a more stable radical. Right. It's also always going to form a more stable radical, which means it could have formed this way also. Br could have come here and dot could have come here. But which is major? More stable radical is major. All right. So this is a more stable radical form. Once you get this more stable radical form, that on you again react with HBr. Write it here. HBr. Right. So it will undergo homolytic fission. And what do we get here now? So we would get H added up. Br got already added up plus Br dot is created. Okay. So what happened here? So let me show you, tell you that that regio wise it is anti Markovnikov. Anti Markovnikov. All right. And this type of a major anti Markovnikov product forming is called peroxide effect. Peroxide effect or also the next Karash effect. Karash effect. And very important note is this is going to only happen with only happen with HBr. Which means in the place of HBr, if you take HCl and try to do the same reaction in peroxide, that will still give you uh, Markovnikov as the major product, but it, it is not going to happen that anti Markovnikov will come as the major product in the other case. I have a molecule this way and I'm treating that with HBr, treating that with HCl, treating that with HCl in peroxide, I'm treating this with HBr and peroxide. What are the products formed here? Only major products. Br will be here. Br will be here, major product. Cl will be here. And same Cl will come. These are the major products. 